Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details. The Word Docs acknowledge that we meet on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with this land. We acknowledge that these lands are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today and we extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations. Why don't you write when you don't need money, honey? That would certainly make a hit. Welcome back to Word Docs. I am your host, Alex Vickery Howe. I am here with Amy T. Matthews. Hello. And Sean L. Williams. Hello. And uh, believe it or not, these people have doctorates, and we are the Word Docs. Yay! Yay! Go us. Woo! Yeah. Go, uh, Alex. <laughs> uh, and we are talking today, um, thanks to uh, special guest... Um, Question asker or uh, uh, Shane Bevan. We need a better term <laughs> than was, that, don't we? I was going to say commentator, that. but he's not really commenting. Listener. Long, listener. Long time listener. Long time listener. Long time listener. That's right. Yeah. First time friend, Shane Bevan. Beautiful uh, colleague. Hi, Shane. Hi, Shane. He's hi, in the Shane. office next to me, actually. He's so across the road Shane. from me, too. Across the. Oh, we love him. We love Shane. He sees me every Thursday when I climb the hill and I, I can, can't make it to the car park because I'm old, so I stop for cheese and crackers <laughs> at you the vending machine. You are the youngest machine. of all of us at this table. Yeah, but, mm. but, but mentally and emotionally. <laughs> and emotionally You're even younger. younger. <laughs> even younger. Uh, and he always um, he pities me when we – on Thursday And afternoons. Shane is a visual effects genius. I'm quite serious. We love he Shane and we love his He actually did the cover of work. one of your books, didn't uh, he? He's done the cover of one of my books – Two of my books now, Ooh. and uh, one of uh, two of my CDs. So it's he's fantastic. He's absolutely brilliant. We love you, Shane. We do. So that was probably the longest introduction ever. But thanks to <laughs> Shane Bevan, we are discussing immortality. You which had to I, think about it there. I, saw I that. believe like, I was so close. Impossibility. I was going to say immorality again. Oh wow! I'd like that episode. It's another be show. A very long episode. <laughs> <laughs> and and I believe this is a fear of Shane's. Yes. Um, so we, um, in one of our episodes uh, from last season, discussed my favourite trope, that of the – what was it again? Oh, that's right, the, the matter transmitter. The matter transmitter. Uh, and, uh, does not exist. Uh, does Shane, not, exist. not yet. Not yet. <laughs> it does in the future somewhere. It's it already does, happened. It does in literature. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whatever we can imagine is at least partly real. Uh, and Shane said, hey, that's one of my greatest fears. All you've got to do is do the other one. And I'll be forever traumatised, and that's immortality. So he's afraid, he's afraid of, of living forever. So now I've got dun. Queen in my head. Yeah, <laughs> Don't Let, sing it or we'll be in trouble. <laughs> I've, already, I've already made that mistake. Let's start there. So how do – I mean, I'm, are you afraid of living forever? Sean, we'll start with you. <sighs> well, I, I've given this a lot of thought as a science fiction writer and as somebody – like, you know, the stupid palm lines you have – on yeah, your like hand. your lifeline. Yeah, and my yeah. lifeline wraps right around my wrist to the back of my oh, hand. So you're around oh. for So I'm going to be around for a long time. So I've been assuming that I'll live for a long Which time. Which one is your lifeline? Um, it's the one that goes around your thumb, around the yeah, meat right. of your thumb. And it, the meat of your thumb. And is it your right yeah. hand or your left hand? Right. The left, uh, look, I know too much about it. The left is the one you're born with. The right is the one that you grow into. Is that true? No, none of this is true. It's all rubbish. Mine's not I don't think, big. Well, mine goes around my hand, but not that far. Ah, mine goes around my wrist three times and up to my elbow. I think where's I'm already the wrist? gone. <laughs> where's where's your wrist? How does it connect to your wrist? <laughs> I don't uh, think mine connects. I think I might be dead. <laughs> so, well, due to your, your, your impressively long lifeline, uh, you believe you're going to live forever or well, for longer than you would like. I assume, well, I don't, well, no. See, this is the thing. So, being a science fiction writer, I've, I've thought about longevity and immortality and all that kind of stuff. And I think we're heading towards, assuming we don't kill ourselves, climate change and various mm. other things, we're, we're heading towards uh, the, the strong likelihood that, the kids that are born today will live longer than our usual lifespans. I mean, we can see they're lifespans quite, creeping They're like up saying already. like 150 years is a possibility, yeah. right? 150 wow. years is a possibility. And once you get to that point, you know, why not 200, 250, 300? And I've cracked jokes about being uploaded into machines and robot bodies and all that kind of stuff. But I think um, being forced to live <laughs> Robo forever. Robo-Sean. Yeah, Robo-Sean, <laughs> that's right. A lot of people say, well, who'd want to live forever? You'd be all old and sick and ugh. And of course, no, one's, no one wants to live forever if they're going to be old and sick. And but blur. if you're not. But if you're not, if you're healthy and fit and can live as long as you want to, and I think the flip side 
of immortality is the right to die whenever you want. So you've got to have the two side by side. Uh, then I think, you know, longevity could be great, but immortality probably bad. My question would be, do all the people you love get to live with you? Like, is it just you being immortal or is it everyone you love? Because I don't think you'd want to be immortal if none of your people came with you. No, again, but of course that's, that's sort of a thought experiment, but it's probably not likely to be the reality. I mean, if I have the ability to be immortal, then the chances are that you two will be, and we'll be making Word Docs episodes for thousands of years. Welcome back to Word Docs. <laughs> Here we are in 4073. The other question there, though, and <laughs> is if, you know, one, if you do live that long, mm. the chances of relationships surviving that long, like you're more likely to have mm. multiple different relationships, yeah. so different friends, maybe be through two or three relationships or more. Mm. There's a, a novel by Robert J. Sawyer called Starplex, I think, and it's about a, a man who's about to get married to the love of his life and this strange alien-seeming being uh interacts with him and it turns out this being is from the distant, distant future. And then it turns out that this strange being is in fact himself from the distant, distant future. And of course he asked the question, so, you know, how's how's my future wife, how's the Marjorie? Wife? How's Marge? And, and his future self says, I don't even remember that person. I've been alive for so long. Oh. And, uh, and, and there's a sense of we, we in our sort of life as we understand it think that's a terribly sad thing but for this being from the future that's perfectly normal we don't mourn the fingernails we've cut off or we don't mourn the parts of would you get bored it would yeah then if you well, got completely bored and couldn't fix that then you could just yeah get us out of life i mean that was going to be that was <laughs> going to be off. my um my question to you amy do you think psychologically because there's one argument physically we, mm. we're young forever uh, or whatever form we physically take is sort of Giant spiders. <laughs> that would scare you. Yeah, not if I'm inside the giant spider. <laughs> Terrorising everybody else. That sounds great. But assuming your physical form endures in some way, do you think psychologically or emotionally, Amy, um, see, I would think that there is a point where, I don't know, do you think there's a point where you feel that your time has passed? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what. We teach a lot of younger people and I feel old. <laughs> you know, like I'm not old, but you do start feeling the younger ones coming up and what happens if you live that long? Mm. I don't know that I'd ever get bored except some things would bore me. I'm already sick of grocery shopping and cooking every night. And mm. Imagine if you're doing that for 150 years. Mm. Maybe your spider body will be sustained by the <laughs> sun alone. Oh, no, I'm but thinking of the blood then, of young people. <laughs> <laughs> but then consumption, right? Like yes. imagine... Where's mm. the world's population going to be if everyone lives for 150 years? These, mm. these are all really important questions that um, <clears throat> would need to be solved, of course. But but in an uh, imaginary world. In an imaginary world. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it, we don't know what the solutions to those questions will be. Um, and there, there may not be any. any. Yeah. And uh, But I think confronting these kind of questions – helps us confront what it means to be an individual and what it means to and be meaning, a person right? and what yeah. the meaning of life is. Is the 42, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn, I always forget that. <laughs> it's not 43. Um, so, what is, so I would have said that the meaning of my life was to be a writer and to write stories. But would you get sick of it? But I can see now that I could, be, I could, I could go back to writing as a hobby and write music instead for another 30 years. And then maybe after I've done that, then I might go back and do the pure maths degree that I thought about doing in my 20s, but decided it was too Gee, hard. Gee, that sounds fun. <laughs> I think oh, even if you live know? forever, you might not do that one. Oh, no, I would love he it. Would love think, it. I, he would love it. He would love it. I would really love it. And uh, and this is, the, if you live for a thousand years, you get to live a hundred lives, maybe. But does that mean does that mean that each has less meaning? I was having lunch with mm, a maybe, friend maybe who's, who's only in their um, mid to late <clears> 70s. And, and healthy, mm. you know. We're having lunch, we're chatting, and they said, um, if I die tomorrow, that is not a tragedy. And I said, well, I... I think you get to an age where you start mm. thinking about and, that. Yeah, and thinking about mm. it, but not in a... I mean, that sounds completely no, morbid. But and I guess over having, lunch it was a, a bit time. morbid. But, but, you, but the sense of I'm very happy, I've accomplished, yeah. and, d you know, uh, my time has been good, and I'm actually ready now, mm. not necessarily to die, but I understand that... Um, not everyone gets there, though, do they? No, no. no, 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 no. And I had a very close fem family member who I won't identify who reached that phase a while back, and I remember being absolutely shocked mm. that you could be that you could be you could think that you'd had enough life. And 
I've, but I think I've been get, in that position. You as know, you get a lot older, though, you want like you get more tired, right? Yeah, Less and I'm energy. in my fifties, suffering from chronic pain, and now COVID, and I sort of think, oh yeah, it might be nice actually. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, baby. I'm not to the point you of need actually. A holiday. <laughs> <laughs> but that, but if I if I were to die, if I discovered I was got that I had terminal cancer, I, of course I'd be upset and I'd be sad, but I wouldn't when be as upset scare, or as sad though, as I was when I was 25. When you have yeah. a scare, though, I think suddenly it's different. Mm. Yeah. Like suddenly you get this real urge to live. Mm. Yeah. I don't know, though. I think immortality is a weird one like mm. because… And I think immortality automatically goes to the extreme case. Yeah. It? It's like, the extreme case. And like the person wandering forever and being the only one who lives forever. That's right, yeah. Um, or yes. vampires. And Melmoth, Melmoth the Wanderer. Uh, but there are lots of stages between as we are now and that extreme case that might not be terrible. I don't know. I, I, I really do. Th- I, I feel everything has its time. What's the, it's for, for like every the season there is a term. Yeah, you can't is. sing that one either. No, no. I think it comes from the Bible originally, so I'm probably okay. Um, one, of um, um, one of them. But um, uh, as, as, you know, I, I, uh, someone said to me yesterday, Alex, you were born 80. And that might be oh, true. But I think man. Was it Lisa who said that to no, you? No, it, <laughs> it was another friend. I didn't see it coming. I that went, makes oh. you 121 now, doesn't <gasps> it? <laughs> you look so good for your age. I think Thank the time you. has come. <laughs> <laughs> Great, Amy, get the shotgun. <laughs> but is, is there a point that death threats, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? The they've the gotten paddock. to death threats. But is there a point We're where just taking you to a farm upstate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Is there a point where you just go, you know, I'm, I've, I've, you know, this is where I'm at. I know? can imagine our listeners going, didn't, this didn't you dark. used to have an Alex? And we go, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's now with a, oh, a lovely is, we've family. Got a, we've got a new Alex. Look, <laughs> Alex <the> same. <laughs> oh, oh. Replace me with another Alex. Who was it? Was it a friend of yours, Amy? With someone where they where they were told <clears throat> who was telling me where they were told their dog went to a farm and they thought that meant what you're implying. Mm. And then they found out as an adult that, no, it went to a farm. It was totally fine. Um, (laughs) Now, the conversation that (laughs) followed on from this when we were talking off air uh, was the immortality, which feels like a bit of a grand term in this context, but the immortality of a writer that, that some writers have work that lasts you know, I'm thinking of, is it Charles Dickens in Doctor Who when he says, Doctor, do my books last and how long do they last? And the Doctor goes, forever, forever. <laughs> you know, is that something that writers crave? I'll start with Amy and we'll move on to Sean. Alex. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I was thinking about this before because I don't know that has ever crossed my mind. Like I think it's such an unstable business mm. that the thought of actually getting a book out and anyone reading it is amazing. True. <laughs> mm. um, I don't know if that ever crossed my mind. What I find interesting is that a lot of the authors we see as kind of canonical and huge in their own time were not the ones people thought would last. That goes right, right back to the, um, to the ancient Greek playwrights, the one that lasts, the, the, the people it's that we surprising. now know of are not the ones that were winning awards at the time. Yeah, and a lot of them weren't even very well known or they flopped. Like Virginia Woolf, like probably sold, what, 12 copies. Her husband published her. Mm. And same with James Joyce. His friend published him and they mm. were not big at the time they just got picked up in universities Mm. but also Dickens was and Twain and a whole bunch of very famous writers were kind of derided in their own time and then you get people like Anthony Trollope who was Mm. huge in his era yes and then has kind of faded off so which would you rather be I mean I'll be dead so I'm probably not gonna care so you'd rather be the the, the, the (laughs) (laughs) you'd rather be Trollope I'm a Trollope (laughs) you'd rather be the writer I didn't want to say (laughs) In, in their own time. It. Um, <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, if you could, I'd rather be successful in my own time probably mm. and enjoy it while I'm here because mm. nothing will be forever. Like even the ones we know, like Dickens or whoever, I it's not going to be forever. Oh, it's still the biggest mm. selling author Yeah, but in it's the only for, it'll be a few hundred years and that's it probably. Not bad though, is it? Not bad. <laughs> Homer's, Sean. Homer's doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> My mother tried to read the Iliad the other day. It didn't work. Oh, um, bless. Well, Jeanette was not the target market. She wasn't the target market, but she said, I'll oh, just pretend I read more of it than I did. So <laughs> we're tell outing her. To, tell her to try the Odyssey. It's a bit more readable. It a bit is, more readable. that's true. Sure. And maybe, maybe Dick. I don't start a Moby <laughs> bloody dick. Well, I mean, that lasted. That bloody whale was still around. I can't believe it's I true. was forced to buy that book. Oh, we sure. heard about sure you it. Were. We heard about <laughs> you reading it. Just put in my hand. Year. Sure. <laughs> what would you rather be? Would you rather be successful or or remembered? 
Well, I'd rather be successful. Uh, and I, I, it is something that I have thought about. So my first novel was a collaboration between me and my friend Shane Dix, who's mm. another Hi, Shane. writer. Hi, Shane. I don't know whether you Shane, listen to this, but Shanes. hey, I must come down and have a coffee with you. Um, mm. He He's a very different writer to me, very slow, very meticulous. And I've always said, whereas I just vomit words at the page and sometimes this. And I always said to Shane, look, sometimes I've, after <laughs> 45 books and 150 <laughs> short stories and a bunch of awards, uh, sometimes well, they do okay. There are a lot of them that didn't, though, still. Um, but I always used Slug to say, in the sky. that's right, exactly. Uh, uh, I always said to Shane, I'm going to write 400 books in my lifetime and 10 on minutes track, after people on track. 10 minutes after I'm dead I'll be completely forgotten but you might write five books and one of them will be treasured centuries like to kill a mockingbird I was going to say Harper Lee right yeah, that was it yeah. exactly that's right so it's something that I have pondered in the past and I'm quite sanguine the possibility that I'm forgotten and, and, and when you're a prolific writer you have books that get forgotten while you're still alive mm. which you've is you've probably uh, forgotten <clears throat> some of them uh, this is true I sometimes Stephen forget King titles Stephen doesn't remember some of the books you wrote mm. I, but I yeah I haven't written any of my books in a alcoholic drug fueled haze so well maybe <clears> you should try it. maybe I should try it. maybe that's the secret <laughs> Uh, so, I, yeah, I do remember all my books. Chocolate-fueled haze, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Alex has done some Moscato-fueled Moscato haze. Have you thought haze. about it, internal adults? Mm. Have you thought about being eternal? Or, or I thought you said, have you thought about being a turtle, Alex? <laughs> Every Either. single day. No, you are the least turtle person I know. <laughs> I don't even know he how might to be a, that mean? He might, be, he might be a ninja turtle. <laughs> ah, um, when I was young, I used to wear the Donatello bandana. Um, you even wearing very, blue today? Is he young. blue? No, he was uh, purple. Uh, uh, they were all red in the original comics. There's a little bit of uh, knowledge there for everybody. A little bit of Ninja everybody. Turtle trivia. Ninja Turtle trivia for everyone. Mm. Uh, I don't think about this. I, I, I know. Are you a living for the moment kind of person? Yeah, I, 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 I would think this. This might not be true, but why not say it? I would think that if you thought about your legacy too much, you'd censor yourself. You'd think everything needs to be a quote or, I, you know, <laughs> I, I, I better be careful. I need to sound smart here. I need to sound smart. Mm. And or, 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 or how will something I say now be interpreted in 30 it's years? You can never know. It's very hard to know, isn't it? Because, like, you often think about not being too much of your moment mm. if you want to be – but then you think about a lot of the authors that have lasted were so much of their moment. Do you know, like, we mentioned Dickens, but, you know, he, he – you, there are walking tours of London – where he would describe, you know, London, and he was often writing about the past. So Great mm. Expectations is set, what, 30 years mm. before it was published, or longer, maybe longer. He would be so meticulous in his detail to be mm. accurate that you could actually go walk those streets and find those things. So he was so much of his moment. Yes. And yet translates. And same with Jane Austen or... So I think you can be – and Stephen King, you know, if it's set in 1973, it's set in 1973 with all the references to yes. whatever. Mm. Yeah. So it doesn't seem to bother if you're dating yourself. Mm. No, that doesn't seem to affect – I don't know why I got onto that. My brain Maybe the, the story me. needs to be have, – have universal qualities that kind of transcend the time and place. I'm not sure whether Moby Dick does, apart from that idea of – Obsession. Obsession, that's universal. Yeah. And, and, you, and mm. no one can tell – what social mores are going to be in place in the future. So it's very hard to predict. Um, no, when we're living in Gilead, all my books will be born. <sighs> exactly. Yeah, right. Huh. You know. Probably mine too. If, we, if we're going to be living in, in Gilead, I don't think I want to be immortal. I'm just going to put that out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I would bag's not that. Oh, uh, can I go back to a point I thought of and then forgot when we were talking about immortality? Of course. Yeah. Do you get to stay fertile? Like are you going to be having children for 100 years of that 100? Well, why not? If you can redesign the body. To live longer than the lifespan, why be not redesign? So you fertility? could have like you several families, yeah. right? or, or a worse why not? parent, a more yeah. apathetic parent. I yeah. say, why not? I mean, that's a different Don't issue again. Go juggle knives, kids. I'm reading. Go <laughs> 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 That was good. That was so good. I nearly passed away <laughs> listening to it. Um, so you know, I, I, I um, it's sort of, I guess, the question of legacy raises questions of. I just think that blocks process, right? That that mm. blocks. There's a big chunk of self importance and narcissism oh, yeah. in and that. Yeah. Oh, and look, I was going to ask, yeah. and then I thought maybe I shouldn't, and now I am going to anyway. Go for it, Sean. Uh, do we know any writers who we suspect are writing mortality? These aren't people without we know. naming without naming anyone. 
Like Ooh. people we know or just well, books or we're reading? I mean, you can sort of – I mean, there, there's a, like a whole oh, genre yeah. of people who are writing to be Yeah, immortal. I can think of genres. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> but um, do we – I mean, I, I've, I can't help but think that if you're writing to be immortal, you're probably not going to get published at all. But that's obviously not true either. Um, but that – You just start using words like forsooth. Uh, a lot. Heretofore. Heretofore. <laughs> Obfuscate. Yeah, you just throw them in. Um, Is that what we're doing wrong? Oh, shit. <laughs> now we know. Maybe it's because we say shit too much. Oh, maybe that's it. I can also have other words for that. I'm going to leave that there. That sounded really <laughs> ominous. That sounded really dark. Get my thesaurus out. I think there are people that think about longevity in that way. Yeah, I think there are. It's I, a bit I, like writing the great Australian novel. Yeah, some there people, are some... T- see, yeah. I, I've, I, I, I think if you're really deeply cynical... I did this with a screenplay once where I just wrote the... Quintessential. Oh, said I've said this, the Australian right? Australian Hey, look, and it was terrible. You've raised this so many times. It's uh, awful. We can I want to see the script, yeah, or it never happened. It happened. <laughs> it's only Send half, it to me. It's only half a script. That's okay. Was we'll it finish it. Or Amy and a I sitting on the fence. And everything. It was. It was all of that. <laughs> yeah, I remember it was, this. And it was trauma, and it was sort of going Cows. back to the farm and the trauma. It was of a horse life. And I want to have a word docs weekend where we lock ourselves in with a, a bucket of mosquito, mosquito. ten kilos. Oh. <laughs> What's it called? Moscato. Moscato. <laughs> COVID no mosquitoes. Brain is okay. Lots of chocolate and whatever Amy mosquitoes. wants. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to finish that script and we're going to be no, it's terrible. It's terrible. But uh, the point I'm making is if you're cynical, you can sort of you can sort of aim that way. I'm quite interested into in why you would want to be like are you like it, there must be some kind of hurt or lack in you if you <clears> desperately need complete strangers 100 years from now to think you're smart. Because it, it feels like an urge that isn't actually about the money. No, it's, it's not about the money because no. you're dead. No, 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 you're no, no, dead. No, you're not true. getting the money. Yeah. Yeah, if you are, there's true. not a lot you can buy. <laughs> I don't know. You can oh, pay the model. boatman. <laughs> you can pay that boatman. Oh, maybe you need both. Maybe you need literally, literary immortality. I wish everyone could see him because his hands are in the air. The fingers like are going. like a crazy maestro right <gasps> now. So this is my new strategy. I'm going to be literally immortal. And I'm going to fund it by being literarily oh, immortal. Oh, wow. Brilliant. This is why so I we need... just won't be able to get away from you. You'll be physically there and you'll be in all the media. Yeah, that's right. So I need to start using heretofore more often. Heretofore worth right <laughs> and now. And forsooth, gadzooks. <laughs> Do you think... <laughs> <laughs> going to be. <laughs> it's an interesting... See, I think a lot of... Uh, it's, uh, see, I'm, I'm kind of... I wrote a play called Out of the Ordinary that was kind of about this. It was about a father hmm. What who was wanted... it called again? Out of the Ordinary, hashtag. And who uh, published that? You can get it Currency now. Press, Currency hashtag. Press, hashtag. Oh, hello. Um, mm. But it was about a father who neglected his immediate family in the pursuit of an artistic dream. Oh. And his daughter just going, screw you, I'm a mathematician and I'm just going to have a really boring, ordinary life. And it's like the Mr tension. Holland's opus. Mm. So it's just like that. Richard Dreyfus has gone a bit mad lately, but let's put that aside. <laughs> yeah, um, we keep that. slandering celebrities know, in so this. We shouldn't, we shouldn't do that. <laughs> Um, we but, don't mean it, Richard. You're fine. But there are people I think you did some good work in the past. Oh yeah, but yours, uh, man. Yeah, Amazing. Yeah. Close, encounters. Close encounters. What about Bob? Oh. <laughs> 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 we both just stared <laughs> blankly at Alex. But uh. there are people I think that do that. That, and I think there's something very, you know, putting mm. a, your immediate connections to one side for the greater dream. Maybe mm. we all do that to some extent. I mean, I said, mm, you know, I think in the past I've neglected personal relationships. Yeah, I have yeah, too, yeah, yeah. Sadly. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Says Amy. All yeah, right, we all do that. Part like, of the course. <laughs> so when does that become unhealthy? Sorry, kids. <laughs> all the time. I think you know that's Stephen King's thing about how. Art should be a support system for life, not the other way around. Yeah, right? so maybe that that's line. the question we're digging down but to. But what was interesting when mm. uh, before we went on air when you talked about this topic, I'm really stumped at the moment for why I write. I don't know why I write. I just do it. Like it, I should like passes this, the time. Yeah, well, I'm immortal, so I've got to fill it with something. <laughs> but um, seriously, like if you think about the time and the effort you put into it, and why it's really interesting why you do it. Because I don't like being looked at. <laughs> no, you said that before. Yeah, you like, like your work being looked I'd at. I like not, people yeah. reading the books. Mm. And it's really lovely to get. I've been getting, because the book, I've got two books out this month, so I've been getting a lot of direct messages on Instagram from readers, which is really lovely. I like That's that. That's nice, yeah. But but there's a, but there's a distance there. Yeah, I don't want to go up on a stage and be looked at. Uh, an opening night of something you've written is bloody awful. I don't want to be there. The funny thing is we're all good at that, even though none of us like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, Good, good at, good mm. at um, 
Being in public. Being in being public. public. We're quite right. good at public speaking. You used to yeah. be better at it. I, I can be quite mad. I just saw your lecture this morning. You're great. Oh, thank you. you. Present beautifully. Oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> I saw it. It was terrible. No, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I'm just trying to be, present, present both sides in our oh, reporting. The, show, the darkness, the hidden dark. No, you're right. But maybe, I mean, you immortality it, is about being recognised, right? And particularly as a writer, you know, Paul Oster didn't get published for a long time. And he was okay with it. In his memoir, Hand to Mouth, he talks about how he just assumed he was a genius and that one day after he died, they would find all these boxes full of manuscripts. And they'd be... And they'd go, wow, yeah, he's good in publishing. That's interesting because there is a point where you have to back yourself. Yeah, you know whether you're good or not. I've I've said that before and, and, you know, Alex and I have talked about this quite a lot, that it can be taken as arrogance but... You know, like David Beckham knew he was good at soccer. That's yeah. I think there's there's knowing what you're good at and knowing what you suck at. I yeah. you know I can't change a tire. I failed my business maths exam. Let's not even Th- talk about rolling cigarettes. Let's not <laughs> even talk about rolling cigarettes. So <laughs> well, reading you know, novels about whales. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole there's a whole plethora. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, knowing that you're good at a couple of things it, is not necessarily. And I think arrogant. there's a difference between knowing you good at something than saying I am the very best I can't yeah. learn anything I else learn like anything. I think you can mm. you can yeah. always be out for improving and doing better but I think if you're really good at something you know you're good at it so is that the reason you're right then is it because you think I do this well I you are Zava <laughs> and fans of Ted Lasso will know oh, who yeah. I'm referring to. Love it. You know Maybe that, not um, that arrogant. But <laughs> Roy Kent is apparently based on Bill Sykes from Oliver. The actor oh. said that on his oh, podcast. That's funny. He said it's, it's Bill, what it's, the accent's all about. Yeah, it's Bill Sykes yeah, yeah. with emotional, oh. in some sort of emotional life, you know. That's, wow. uh, you know, a bit more of an emotional spectrum. But I think I you're right. Say. You wouldn't put yourself out there. Like, part of it is enjoying it and knowing you're good at it. Like, if you're bad at soccer, mm. you don't always enjoy playing it. No. Like, you might enjoy no. having a kick, but you wouldn't enjoy being in a game, a Premier no. League game every weekend because you'd suck and everyone would laugh at you. But and there are also you. people, this is that whole, um, what's it called? The uh, um, Dunning-Kruger thing. People mm. who are very yeah. bad at something yeah. think they're very good at something. Yeah. So that that can be true as well. Because you don't know what you don't know. Because you, do, you don't know what you don't know. Are you telling me I'm bad? No, no, no. I'm <laughs> no. But I'm saying um, <laughs> it is part Only of the reason. Only at soccer. Yeah. Only at soccer. <laughs> I am really bad at soccer. It's, uh, it's part of the that. reason that you... Very sure. That you write, <laughs> knowing that you are good, but also striving to be better, because I think that can yeah. be part of it yes. too. What do you think, Sean? I, I think that's right. <laughs> well done, Alex Tick. Because <laughs> I think you, you know you write something and you go, "That's getting closer to what I yeah. want to say," but the next yeah. time I'll be closer. And again. every yeah, every time you write, trying to push yourself and do better, mm. I think. So mm. I think that might be part of it. Whereas if you really were on that kind of Dunning-Kruger scale, you'd go, well, I just wrote a paragraph and it's better than War and Peace. I think for me, you can pick the difference in people by how open they are to learning and reading. And mm. do you know, like I think people who are genuinely in love with the craft mm. are always reading and reading widely and mm. going to master classes and listening to other people and they've got enough humility to know that there's a lot they don't know and to mm. keep learning. What about in terms of students then? Do, have you ever Uh-oh. encountered <laughs> students where you, where you just think, well, I'm not, don't name names, but where you've gone, actually <laughs> it's going to be very hard to teach this person because they already think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the biggest danger for all of us is to get to a point where you think, Ah, th- there's an overconfidence. Mm. You never want to let your confidence. I mean, it, there's one thing to go, I know I'm good, mm. but there's a level where you have to be vulnerable and insecure enough to always think, how am I performing? Because you can be like, I'm just going to mix metaphors. Like, or maybe mm. I won't. I'll stick with David Beckham. And what are you going to mix it with? Just, <laughs> I was going to say singing, right? You can be a great singer and have a bad concert or have a yes. bum note yes. or hurt your voice yes. or be in the wrong genre of you know, like should be singing opera and you're in pop. I yeah, don't know. Pavarotti can't rap. Yeah, exactly. Pavs. <laughs> and, and these practices are all uh, constructs of lots of individual practices. So no one's just good at soccer or no. just good at singing no, no, or no, just no. good at writing. I mean, looking at they writing. They can't play every position on the field. No, you're quite right. right. And writing is an amalgamation of dozens of skills and some and everybody's everyone we have in our classroom and everybody in this room right now is good at some things and not good at other things and there's always processes to be learned and, and I guess on. at base level anyone who comes to us as a student 
is open to learning something or because they wouldn't they're, be they're, a student. They're there. Yes, right? that's right. Yeah. But there are sometimes in, in you know, they, when they're auditioning actor in the drama centre, an actor who thinks they're really good is not as interesting as someone who goes, I'm just here to learn, teach me. Because yeah. the actor who thinks they're really good will go out there, get an agent. Do I it, know you know? there are writers that are hard for editors to work with yeah. because they, they're not open to listening to criticism or feedback. I'm I'm surprisingly excited by feedback. Me too. I, I, I get it took me a too. while to it. learn the skills to not internal. Like I think in the beginning you're yeah. more insecure and you gain confidence. You get skills. And it depends, I guess, if you have a good relationship with that editor and you go. Oh, oh there, are actually, bad editors. there are yes, bad there editors. Are. There are cruel are. editors. Yeah, out there. they're definitely. Are. Alex was the victim of a bad editor just last week. <laughs> 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 I feel I feel like I've been lucky. The publishing houses I've worked with, the editors have been amazing. Yeah. I, in my edi- editing in the industry topic, I always bring in um, structural edit notes. And, oh, they're pretty uh, intense. Often, oh, yeah, aren't like they? seven, eight, nine pages yeah. worth mm. of criticism, and it's uh, it's all incredibly valuable. Yeah, uh, and really useful, and all designed but confronting. To help and part but, of yeah. the job is to learn how to manage your emotions around that. Absolutely, Step, and have a few things. Few irons in the fire, <coughs> so you don't collapse. So you can beat people with them. Yeah, yeah. Can, so you can beat them. <laughs> okay, I ask you both um, another question. If there's time, sure. uh, okay. Which is, um, Sean just held a hand up to me. Uh, Not with a rude gesture. And, and, can and, I just and say? He hit me. No. Um, it, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, Amy. Brutal. Amy brought out the finger, oh, the bad one, and hit him with it. A bad finger. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my question. You're aligning me. This is slander. It's not oh. slander. It's true. As a writer, I'll start with who should I start with? Amy. I start with Amy. <laughs> this is my when, when you say, you know, like soccer, you can't play every position. Yeah. What's one thing as a writer, let's go both ways one that you've discovered <laughs> you're good at, and one that, you've dis- that you're still like, even as a writer, there's that one thing I haven't quite worked on. All right. I'm really good at dialogue. Mm. I've always been very good at dialogue. That was never hard for me. In the beginning, I found plot really hard. Mm. And I think because I went to an institution that was literary and was not about plot, um, I had to really work to learn that. Now, I think pacing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think I would be a natural for like a giant 500,000 word novel (laughs) because I think my first third is often really slow and then my last third's too quick. Right. So I think my pacing is always off. Someone said to me last night that ageing is like this. The first 45 years of your life, you're climbing <laughs> yeah. the hill, then you're then falling down. <laughs> <laughs> tumbling, tumbling. <laughs> tumbling yeah. down. Sean? Um, I've always been pretty good with plot and I've had to work very hard to make my character and style more interesting and I feel like I'm still working on style in various ways. Interesting. Mm. But one thing I cannot do and will never, ever be able to do, I discovered to my great sadness a couple of years ago, uh, is write um, in the style of a 90s rapper. And I might have mentioned that before. But <laughs> Sorry, that was I so know, haven't I? I oh. wasn't expecting no, that. I was oh. not expecting that. You know what that. I was expecting is he always says he's not funny. That's what I, I was I expecting. I actually find you quite funny. <laughs> yeah. but, but no, he came out with came something with very rapper. specific. Right. Rapper. I wanted to write a tribute uh, a poem for Roy Ananda, the amazing Adelaide artist, for his um, focus book that was published by Wakefield Press a couple of years ago. Hi, Roy. Hi, Roy. Hey, Roy. And uh, and he loved. He's a big fan of nineties rap, and I had to do lots of. Well, I wanted to do lots of really experimental little pieces, and <laughs> one of, I wanted to do a nineties rap about Darth Vader. It did not work at all. It was terrible. <laughs> anyway, there you go. I failed. So Props for trying. I love yeah. it. Alex, what about you? <laughs> um, I um, dialogues. Fine, I can. I, I, it's oh, interesting yeah. because King of dialogue, both talk, of you, you know, do. working on um, trying to sort of break into the novel space. One of the in- incredibly <laughs> unsurprising revelations of recent <laughs> years is first person from a character's point of view. You're fine. So much stronger oh. than if I try and third person it out because the the feedback, which is just makes total sense is when I'm trying to be third person, I still sound like I'm becoming that guy and now that guy and now that woman. I don't mind that. It's just if you're you're changing too often, it's Mm. more head hoppy, right? It's a bit Mm. head hoppy. and and, Mm. But as soon as you put me in first person, it's much less criticism. It's like, okay, I'm Mm. with you now. So Mm. your inclination would probably be for deep point of view in the third person where you're kind of located. Mm. So you, what I would recommend then is changing from chapter to chapter yeah. yes, Same. rather than changing there. within the chapter. Because yeah. I think deep point of view is great. Yes. If you can have the language of the whole book in the voice of the character but you're in third. That's really hard to do. It is. And, oh, and wonderful when it's done well. 
yeah, amazing. So well, that's that's an, that's a very specific yeah. mm. um, thing. Whereas if I write first person, it's like, oh yeah, well, I'm with you. This is great. Mm. As soon as I go third person, like, okay, here's the long list. What of do you issues. like on rewrites? Um, Darren Nash, get Darren Nash on the <laughs> phone. I'll ring him right now. I, I think with someone like Darren. Great. With Caleb, great. Darren Nash, yeah. the With someone I editor. don't – sorry, Darren Nash, Hello, the Darren. excellent editor, who I'm going to meet on Skype soon and prove he's not you. I Maybe I'm you've already one. met him. Maybe I've already met him. Um, it would be Sean dressed as Darren and you dressed with, as Caleb. With a little moustache. So I think with someone I know and trust, great. Oh. Yeah. With someone I'm not sure about, not great. Right, and so that's I, I don't kick back. I reflect for a long time and go, how do I – how do I respond without kicking back? I've yeah. learned not to kick back. You do have to. Don't kick. Uh, mm. You do have to evaluate people. I've had not for major publishers, but when you do short stories mm. for smaller things, where often the editorial teams can be, you know, learning. Then you, mm. they're emerging editors. Um, mm. You can get some feedback where you're like, "No, nah, I'm not doing that." Mm. And there's a f- couple yeah. of times where I've just pulled the story because I don't want to change it. Um, yeah, I. I I'd be resistant to that, but but I I've, I've had well recently with an academic I, article I, I was kicking back. I, like crazy. I didn't go with one publisher recently because the wow. before I signed there were editorial notes of like so I could choose who to go with. Yeah, that's and interesting. I didn't like the editorial notes at all. I thought they didn't get me or the book, so I didn't go with them. And I think that is a really that takes experience before you like yes. you have to have done quite a lot before you can trust yourself to know. Mm. Yes, it's a weird position to be in, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I had to audition two editors once at a publisher and it was such a strange, mind-bending mm. circumstance. Yeah. It's normally the yeah. other way around. Because uh, I want it feedback. I want not? a lot of feedback. It wasn't clear-cut. No, but I went okay. with the right person. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, uh, I like feedback too. Lots and lots of pages and pages. Yeah, of yeah. Pages. Just briefly, because I know we're running out of time, but with the, with the script competitions I've been entering, some of them have mm. feedback. And I've entered so much because I'm crazy. I can't respond to all of them. So you have to start going... Where's the pattern here? And sometimes you'll have a complete outlier who will come up with you at something so bizarre and you go, look, if you were the person funding it, maybe I'd go down that road because that's interesting mm. because there's all these other people over here saying something else. I just, I won't go there. Mm. And so that can be quite interesting where you, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a randomness and I think as you say, sometimes you go, that's not quite where I'm going. That's so, something else. Shane, the upshot is that the word docs can talk forever. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, everybody listening is immortal, so they can fit this episode into their lives. We have not wasted any of your time. Okay, I no. think it's time to wrap up. Hopefully we didn't scare you too much, Shane. Yeah, Shane, I hope you can sleep tonight. Imagining Sean inside a giant spider. <laughs> Drinking the blood <laughs> of the, all our students. <laughs> you would be so terrified if you ran into that yourself. Oh, yeah. I'd shit myself. That's why I want to be inside the, the spider suit. I'm no fool. I know they're coming. <laughs> the, the Peter Thiel is building spider. one right now. <laughs> they're not coming. <laughs> the giant immortal spiders are not coming. Well, they don't, well we need Alex to say that because everything he – Rights happens. So I'm going to say so. they're not coming. Great. I've got a long list of things I'm worried about. Though. <laughs> <laughs> That's not on. Okay. Well, actually, okay. that makes me feel a lot better. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> so, who am I going to throw to to say the magic words? Oh. What do we yourself. say, Alex? Oh, damn, <laughs> yes. it's me. We say happy writing. Happy writing. Happy writing forever and ever 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 and ever. Why don't you write when you don't need money? All your notes sound alike too much. All of them start with I love you, honey, but they end with the same old touch. Just for a change, send a nice loving letter and cut out that please remit. Why don't you write when you don't need money? Honey, that would certainly make a hit. Well, this is big. Impossible. <laughs> I've hit record. All right. Immortally impossible. Immortally Eternal. impossible. So, so just okay. We are interminably. Here. Alex Eternal. is being interminable. <laughs> well, that, yes. Eternable. As, as, so we're going to talk about. Just so I'm clear. <laughs> I love oh, that. Does that help though? Does that? Or do you just need to dodge and car your way through it. All right. Okay. Something like that. We can Every, everyone, that. take a deep breath. Oh, oh no. no! I hate my my friend. Used to be on the radio and he'd do this. Anyway. Oh. Have you got misophonia, Alex? 
Sometimes. Oh. Sometimes. I don't think it works that way. <laughs> so sometimes someone will be eating and it will just drive me mental. I'll just like, You're afraid to say yes because you know we'll use it again. We'll weaponize misophonia against you. We would you. never do that. No. <laughs> no. Don't you know us, Alex? Oh, you do know us. Yeah, I do. That, I've, I've bitter experience. You know the problem with Alex? He's, just, he's an only child. He's not used to the ribbing. Mm. You're not used to being having the piss taken out of you. Have you been time. introduced to the ribbing? The ribbing is a special <laughs> thing that siblings get. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll you bring really my ribbing along. It. Everyone else has it. You must want it. You've turned eighteen, son. <laughs> now we have the you ribbing. The ribbing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch my dad. Okay. <laughs> Don't touch my rib. <laughs> okay. That's what Adam said, but look what happened. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I'm not oh. sure who that's most offensive to, and I apologise to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> is it offensive to anyone? Well, yeah, Christians it's and women. Women, and I think, was where women. I would. Is yeah. it offensive to them or is it just a joke? Well, I think if I was joke. called a rib. It's probably offensive to comedians. Anyway, I don't know. What am I talking about? Um, well, apparently Maybe. Alex is hosting, so we haven't right. started wait, wait, yet. Wait, 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 wait. Fish. 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 <laughs> okay, all right. This is the eternal not starting All right, wait, wait, ready, ready, ready. <clears throat> Fish. <clears throat> Hip, 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 hip. Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. Me. Okay. Are we starting now? <laughs> Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzcastNetwork.com for details.